Okay. I shaved. Kind of weird. Not a close shave, but a shave. Looked so bad that I had to put my teeth in. Well, my top plate, anyways. So, if you can't understand me, eh, too bad. Because really, you don't want to hear what I got to say. Now, do you know what the not notwithstanding clause is? It's the power that we had uh, legislated with the Canadian uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It is the veto power of the government to stop uh, an action, a charter action, that is succeeded. So, like when, when we uh, allowed same-sex marriage, a lot of people said, use that notwithstanding clause, let's get rid of those gays, right? But we, I guess we had a mature attitude and, and, and let it happen, right? That way all the closet... No, I won't say that. <sighs> I was kind of a little bit homophobic, actually, but I'm getting over it. I got it. I, I think they have the right to suck anything they want. Just stay away from me. <laughs> that's, that's rather rude, I imagine. But <sighs> just because I don't agree with it, does it mean I don't even want to keep this subject open so let's just drop it before I put someone else's foot in my mouth and that's my foot but okay so anyways we have this uh, ability uh, or the government has this ability to stop an act that has won its cause like a discrimination or if it was something that would shake the foundation of Canada you know like a 400 billion dollar lawsuit right but this 400 billion dollar lawsuit is because the government refused to even acknowledge the possibility that I was telling the truth. And being that I am a Canadian citizen first, if this is really a democracy, then it doesn't matter what I say, I should be heard. And evaluated on the grounds of whether or not it's right or wrong not on the grounds of who says it's not it has to be investigated that's like that's like uh, due diligence an officer before he makes a charge has to look at everything that's there and if there is not enough evidence to go forward with that uh, charge he needs to drop it not like uh, what happened to me when my when I was charged for assaulting my daughter with a tire iron okay you know they got to get a little more creative the armed robbery it was a tire iron the foot the when she got hurt it was a tire iron like tell you the truth my daughter's not really that mechanically inclined so I don't even think she really knows what a tire iron was. You know why they said a tire iron? Because it was looked like a tire iron. And if 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 it would have been a tire iron, and if I would have been holding it, my fingers, my fists would be on top of that bruise. Ever got punched in the head? Sometimes you actually get finger marks or knuckle marks. But, beside the point, what, uh, you know, I got a problem with Marge McLeod. Marge McLeod. This woman is, been screwing me over 
ever since I used to play with her little boy. Oh, no insulation, you suggest? Possible. Like, you realize I was, I was put into a foster home on a CBA, one year at a time. Custody by agreement. That means my, my uncle and aunt agreed for a year. But there was never any agreement to four years. But they had to because the reason that I was in that foster home was so that dad's will could go forward the way it was set up. Department of Veterans Association that used to give me 256 a month when my mom used to get an ish check and she was under the care of the public trustee. Now, that means that the public trustee is basically responsible besides the worker, the ish worker, which was very godly. And I think the guilt from the situation, and that's why he told me everything. He told me, like when I asked him, there was a, a March 81 contact notice when mayors came in when they told Marge Grusevich at the time, that's because I used to play with Danny Grusevich. He was the guy that used to stop Denise George in uh, Central Park and refused to let her go by. Yep. Until she let him stick his hand down her pants. Yeah. Even the time she was on a rag and Daddy walked around with a red hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's her do That's her son. So you can understand where he gets his shit from. But this woman kept putting in her reports, and, and like I've seen them. Um, there's some interesting topics once you do the freedom of information, eh? And uh, this worker, Marge Gusevich, kept saying that uh, I, I, I was still a problem, blah, 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 blah. You know, that's still a problem. I don't know why I would have got a most improved student in uh, uh, seven persons in grade nine. Yeah, that, that sounds like I'm being a problem, right? It had nothing to do with my act. It had everything to do with the will. It had everything to do with the people, the masons, everybody controlling everything, even where I stayed, even what the judges were supposed to say. Well, I'm sick of it. Because aside from... Marge Grusevich, knowing about the will, knowing about my father, knowing all this stuff, and when Mayors asked her to go and get him back, even though I was 18, and they figured, well, what does it matter? You guys are manipulating the situation anyways, go get him. But they didn't. She says, we can't, he's 18. But, now, if, so, then she says, we start in, in, the, in the notes, March 81, contact notes, that very godly guaranteed me that was Marge Gusevich, and he says her name is now Marge McLeod. Now, uh, does that sound like anybody you know? Like the big coke dealer from town, uh, Ross McLeod, his dad, the police chief. Is that the guy? Yeah. Are they related? Are they the same kind of people? Maybe. Maybe not. Right? But this woman continually tries to destroy my life. And why would she want... Why would she have that much against me? Like, I can be a dick. I'm sure you guys figure that out. I can be persuasive. I can be obnoxious. I can be a lot of things. But do you think any of it is, is, was because of the way I've been treated? Like, 
I'll tell you, you kick a dog enough times, that thing will bite you. Well, guess what, buddy? I'll bite you! Oh, yeah, the police knocked those out. We don't know if they're really trying to, or they tried to kill me. I don't know. But they, they beat the shit out of me, for sure. And matter of fact, it was a conspired act. Because they actually had one fucking cop holding off the ambulance that was coming to get me. Oh, why would an ambulance be coming to get you, Jerry? Because earlier that day, the ambulance was there. I was taking my dogs out and me and an EMT headbutt. But if they would have took me and the EMT, the person they came to see wouldn't have been able to even get onto the... The real reason the ambulance was called. So I told them, no, no, I'm go ahead, go ahead, take her. That was Tammy Dolphy at the time. And the EMT injured, head, head butt. See, I was, I was raising pups. I had pups. And uh, one pup started to pee. Six pups. That means five more are good right away. So I grabbed the one that was upstairs, and I had him by the collar, and I was bent over like this, and somehow she's coming up the stairs running, and I'm going downstairs with my head up, and we go pop, and uh, doo, right? So that was the extent of that. There was no malice. There was nothing, you know? Like, I always go and hit somebody in the head like that, man. So I just about get knocked out or brain dead or whatever. Oh, I am brain dead. No, not really, but you know. So, anyways, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the step, and I'm starting to feel a little woozy, you know, not the, I might have had a concussion, I don't know. And they told me if anything changes, boom, get another, another ambulance up here, get you back to the hospital, okay? So, I'm following their instructions. I'm sitting on the step inside my house. One officer is standing to make sure that no ambulance gets passed and it's being held one block over. And one cop I see first and he comes in and he really wants to check out the house, right? And they kind of choked at me because the last time they we had a confrontation, I got charged with six pounds of pot. Not because I was selling it. It was because I used to sell it. Now you're saying, what the heck's that supposed to mean? You used to sell it? You got six pounds? You were selling it. You're a drug dealer. Yeah. Well, sorry, buddy. I wasn't. I used to, I used to sell drugs to make sure I had food to eat. Yeah, I did that. You know, you get bills and you pay all your bills off. And sometimes you just can't buy power and food. You know, what a choice you have to make, whether you're warm or fed. Like, what's the difference? Or you sell a little pot and uh, you can have both. And I've done that. Now, for 40 friggin' years, I couldn't get a job that mounted to anything for fear that the place I was working was really dad's in the original and they don't want the person's heir to end up taking it. Oh, and I should, I should take everything, but I don't know, I think I'll just settle for your, the oil and gas rights given to my daughter in Ontario. Because I'm sure without that revenue, you guys will have such a time chasing your tail, you know? And then, and then, when, when everything started to fall apart, then we can start handing out the charges for this conspiracy, you know, that started this all. When you guys uh, told uh, my sister to stop paying the taxes, so she'd have to go to the credit union bank and she'd have to tell the credit union bank, stop making payments, right? And then when that stop making payments, you know, let it go by and we get notices. If you don't do something, we're going to foreclose. If you don't do something, we're going to foreclose. But I bet you they didn't even get that because they were conspiring. 
to do an illegal act, to do something wrong, to basically screw me over. Because everything was mine. Now, I don't want to harp on everything, but, you know, if you live, if somebody steals a billion dollars worth of stuff 40 years ago and looks at you and laughs along the way, something's friggin' wrong. You know, I'm not a peasant king for nothing. The story goes. But the day of my birth, Dad's in the front of Medicine News, right? Truth be told, he had booked that thing three times before, but, you know, pregnancy never comes exactly when you think it's gonna. Or there's, you know, so for three times, he had booked the to, to do this article, and the only consistent thing about it is that those three times happened to line up with the three times they thought I was going to be born. Now, I don't know what that means to you, but that means to me that when Dad was introducing the, well, the almost fulfillment of the co Davidic Covenant, right? You ask me, what's the Davidic Covenant? Well, according to uh, Daniel, it's uh, going to happen May 9th, 2025. Okay? You see that? You know, they say there's uh, no one knows the hour of, of his return. They don't. Because they didn't know when Israel got its home. That was the missing part to the equation. Right? That was the missing part. Like if you have uh, polynomials and you're going to do all that shit, there's a method to your madness, right? Or if you're going to figure out how to make, I don't know, whatever you want to make. You have a recipe, right? And you follow that recipe, but if you don't have something, it doesn't work. That's not quite the same, but you get the general idea, okay? Now, so we got... And the missing part was Israel having its home. The rose or whatever. So, Dad filled in that blank. Well, he didn't do it alone, but he was, he was instrumental. The millions of dollars that he sent there, um, even, even, even the, the, when he challenged the heavyweight champion, or the ex-heavyweight champion in the world, to a boxing match in Madison Square Gardens and raised a bunch of money, right? So now you have this guy who basically completes Moses' task. He goes and establishes a home for Israel. And like, sooner or later, Israel's going to find out that... Uh, the Div Davidic Covenant, and I'm sure they're pretty... I think sometimes when I should be able to make it through all these hackers, and like when I wanted to uh, post my other video the other night, I was pretty well screwed blue and tattooed, right? But somehow it worked, right? And I'm thinking that's probably the Mossad, eh? Like they're probably giving me a little hand. Maybe. But you can bet that if you guys push this bit and it gets really bad, I bet you that, that Canada will be the first place that Israel takes over by force. And they would walk right in and kick our ass. Because they are, are pretty uh, devious. Imagine that. Imagine old, uh, like they do everything in secret, man. They are the elite at counter espionage, whatever. When when they figure out this shit's going on, which they probably know already, and they're trying to watch what's really happening, especially with that date at hand. And you can bet 
when God comes and puts me on that throne, you can bet they're back of my ass. But if that ever came to that, this wouldn't be Canada no more. It'd be a new Jerusalem. And BC would never friggin' exist. Those Chinese people would get their asses kicked back to the hole they came from. But I don't want to be sound racist.